Hello, this is Joe at Sierra Specialty Auto. Welcome back to the shop. Today I'm going to build a floating reamer holder. Uh, I do a, a fair bit of reaming and I have had issues with uh, the, the hole being tapered or uh, back, the back edge of the reamer uh, causing scoring in, in a deeper bore. I did some research on floating reamer holders. I found a couple of commercial models. I found a kit to build one from parts supplied by a manufacturer. Uh, those designs seemed to correct pretty well for uh, what I'm going to call axial misalignment where the the center line of the reamer is not the same as the center line of the bore. Uh, don't seem to allow for angular uh, errors which would be uh, more typical in a lathe because the tailstock center line is not going to be exact with the uh, uh, headstock or spindle center line. I found a uh, design by a gentleman who calls himself Bill Zweig on the practicalmachinist.com forum uh, that seems to me to address these issues and he makes specific mention of the angular uh, displacement or angular error in his write-up. Uh, Let's move over to the roll around cart and uh, show you the, the very nice uh, drawing that Bill uh, included with his write up uh, on the Practical Machinist Forum and look at the materials I have and how I'm going to uh, implement his uh, essential design elements into uh, my holder and see, see how that works out. Here is Bill Zweig's drawing, uh, as shown in, uh, on, uh, in the uh, practicalmachinist.com forum. Uh, he says that his uh, bushing here, his bronze bushing, is uh, a clearanced oversized uh, by a few thousands to the shanks. Uh, I'm guessing these are half inch. He doesn't say, and it doesn't really matter. He says that his two cross pins at 90 degree angles are a press fit in the bronze bushing and a sliding fit uh, through holes in uh, the arbor and the, uh, uh, well, the what, outer and inner arbor. Uh, again, I'm going to guess about five thousandths of an inch. It doesn't take a whole lot. Uh, I'm going to uh, change up on his drawing. Uh, almost all of my reamers are Morse taper, either number three or adapted to number three. So I have bought uh, one from eBay and one from Amazon. I don't remember which is which, but I'll put links in the description. This is a Morse taper three male to Morse taper four female adapter. Uh, I looked at the MT3 to MT3 adapter. They do make one in this configuration, uh, but the OD was not large enough to allow for what I want to do uh, with the ID. Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the wall thickness would have been too thin, so I went with the Morse 4. And now here I have an R8 to Morse 3 taper. Uh, so I can put this in the tailstock uh, and put uh, any of my reamers that are either, as I say, Morse Taper 3 or adapted to 3 uh, in here. Uh, Bill mentions this possibility in his write-up that you could uh, do e either or uh, uh, Morse Taper, either in or out. Uh, so I'm going to bore the taper. Uh, now let me mention, these are the inexpensive uh, Chinese stuff and one reason why I went with that uh, is that these are not hardened. I don't see any need 
for hardening for the kind of use these are going to get and it's going to make it a lot easier to do the machining. So I'm going to bore this hole uh, out to a straight diameter uh, sufficient that I can use this piece of closed cell foam as uh, a, a cushion or, or a stabilizer. Uh, I, I want I want the, this to float inside here, but I want it constrained enough so that it is about where it needs to be all the time and has some give to uh, to float around. So I'm going to wrap this around here. I've got for trial purposes. I've got a piece of uh, inch and a half ID uh, brass tube, and I tried rolling this up and putting it in and it fills up the gap, the foam fills the gap and, and seems to me to have about the right kind of give. Uh, so I will uh, put this as an interface between the two parts when I put the pins together. Uh, instead of uh, uh, press fit pins I'm going to use a pair of uh, grade five, <clears throat> grade five, five sixteenths bolts uh, selected so that the uh, unthreaded part uh, extends fully through the bore. I'll tap this side. I'll, I'll drill the cross hole. Tap this side. Uh, this will be uh, clearance for the five sixteenths, and this bolt will be tight in uh, in the outer part and the floating will take place by overboring uh, by about five thousandths or so the two cross holes that made in here. I'll do the cross holes on a uh, super spacer on a milling machine. Uh, after these are tapped I'll cut these bolts off to length so that pretty well explains the process. I'll, I'll uh, uh, shorten this, this link, this piece of, uh, of uh, foam is about the length of, of the uh, straight part of the R8. I'll shorten this so that this is uh, a snug fit, so this is no longer than it needs to be. Uh, because this is, uh, e even so, this is going to add uh, four inches or so to the length of every reamer that gets put in here. So we'll uh, go to the lathe first and do some work on this part. Uh, we'll get it, uh, fi we'll figure out a length, uh, cut it to that length. Uh, I'll do that before I, uh, before we uh, start filming at the lathe. Uh, so the first operation on the lathe will be facing the cut end and then we'll bore to inch and a half ID uh, to a depth that seems appropriate when we get there. We'll take a look at that. In the interest of efficiency, I started by using a series of core drills to get the hole out to approximate size. I took a couple of passes because of the interrupted cut, hoping to get a fairly good finish as far down as possible. Now we'll set a final length and uh, face off in chamfer. That's uh, three and an eighth right there, so I can take off another eighth here. Let's measure about an eighth of an inch. Set the chuck stop and go after that.
all right. That looks pretty good from out here. Let's get it out of the chuck and uh, see what it looks like down in there. Yep, that'll work. The clearances are a little tighter than I thought between the drill bit and the jaw of the chuck. So I'm going to have to uh, uh, spot this and, and drill the inboard hole with, uh, uh, by that I mean the one closer to the chuck, uh, with a quarter inch and then uh, pick that up later in order to get it out to 5 sixteenths. Uh, I'll have to turn it around. Uh, I, I can drill this cross hole uh, when the time comes and then I'll have to turn it around, pick up my quarter inch hole uh, when, when this hole is out here. So let's uh, see if we can make that work. Well, that wasn't very bright. I'm supposed to be at two and a half inches, and I'm at an inch and three quarter or something of that nature. So let's come in and drill another hole and hope nobody sees that one, because that one's in the wrong place. All right, let's try again. Center drill. If that's the worst mistake I make on this project, I'll be happy. Okay, we're going to have to adjust that. We're, uh, uh, we're too close to the chuck now to get the center drill down in there. So I'm going to have to offset this by, uh, what is it going to take, an eighth of an inch? So let's bring this out to, well, let's make it 2400, 2.4. That clears just barely. Okay, we'll go with that. I'm gonna uh, re zero here. We'll do the two and a half inch. Uh, well, let's see. If we're going a, a hundred thousandths in from that, we'll go a hundred in from the other end. I'm coming up against the chuck jaw on the other side. I need more drill bit sticking out. All right, that just made it. Just barely. All right. So, let's rotate the chuck uh, 90 degrees. Well, first let's back off. So I was at uh, 2,500, 2,400. Uh, so I want to go, instead of 2.5 inches, I want to go 2.3. That'll even that up. So there's... There's 2.3. Uh, nope, I wanted uh, 1.8. 1.8, because I was, I was going to be 2 inches, a half inch, 2 inches, and another half inch. Uh, and I took, uh, took 100 off of that. So that should be 
around about 600. That's uh, yeah, a little under 5 eighths. So that'll that'll work out okay. And th those were arbitrary numbers that we picked to start with. So uh, we're just going with a different arbitrary number. Now come around. I want 180 on the index. So let's come around to 90. And try it again for the 90 degree hole. And this time I can use my uh, a tap drill. That'll be letter F. I can go all the way through with the tap drill. the top hole with with uh, 5 sixteenths and do I want a chamfer on that I might want to no, I don't think it matters. I'll just deburr that and we'll just let the head of that bolt come up against the, the round. It won't hurt a thing. All right, so I'm done with this. I can tap that in the vise because I have this clearance hole to guide the tap. So I'm going to turn this loose. Now let's reverse this and pick up with a quarter inch drill into here uh, I'm not concerned now about my, uh, my lengthways measurement so I'm going to bring this a little closer to the chuck jaws and we'll pick this up I should be able to, to just do that and pick that up very well it should be plenty close enough all right so now we're back to the uh, uh, the 5 sixteenths uh, now we're back to the F, the tap hole, tap drill size. And drill through with that on both of them. Now for a clearance hole for the bolt. And that's done. Now we'll just have to repeat the process for the other one, remembering that we want to be 1.8 between the holes instead of uh, 2 inches. And this one I believe I can get set up and do in, uh, in one setting. Let's get the chuck out of the way for a moment so I can spin this handle freely. First one we want to make at 90 degrees to the to the uh, drift hole, or approximately 90. That looks fairly good, but I don't. Well, I'll go all the way through with the center drill. I should be able to do that. Uh, first, we need to figure out where this is. 
chuck back in, put the edge finder back in, and come out to the end. My apologies if I'm coming in front of the shot. I just have to work on this side. I got no choice. Now we'll come in uh, 600 from the end. And there it is. Nope, just about made another mistake. We want 18, uh, we want uh, 2400 from the end for this hole. Trying to think about too many things at once. There we go. That looks better. All right. I'm going to use an eighth inch pilot hole for these. Crank the speed up a bit. here that doesn't sound like a very sharp bit we may have a hardened uh, spot in there this is supposed to be unhardened but that that had that squeaky hard sound let me go round up a carbide drill bit there's a quarter inch carbide tipped bit let's see if we can do any damage with that and I'm gonna slow it down a bit for this. That definitely was cutting much differently at the uh, uh, at the drift hole, the drift slot. The carbide bit's doing it. I think I may possibly have to get in there with a little burr and uh, try to remove the case hardening around that hole before I go to the uh, to the clearance hole. So for the moment, I think I'm going to go try the other end. Uh, roll roll this 90 degrees again. out 1800 to 600 and we'll see we'll see if the threaded end of that R8 shank is hardened 
None of it was supposed to be hardened according to the description. Well, that's taking a cut with the file. I'm not really sure. That eighth inch drill bit may, may be dull. May be part of my problem. No, that center drill doesn't want to touch it either. Let's try the carbide again. That's taking a nice cut. That passed through nicely. It got pretty warm didn't hurt the carbide. Now I have an O. This is a this is a cobalt bit and I'm not quite sure how it's gonna work. I'm gonna give it a try. I'm a little nervous about this. I've got some uh, I don't know what the name of this stuff is. It's a kind of a uh, creamy tan colored stuff that uh, is supposed to be really good for this kind of thing and I'm going to slow down a little more see what happens here keep your fingers crossed that did pretty well That didn't. Let's see if we can get in from the other end on that. Back around to zero. That's I think about where I am. There we go. Let's see if this will come in here. Alright, I'm going to have to go sharpen that bit because when it came against the bottom it took the edge right off of it. So I'll need to uh, sharpen the bit and come against the other end the same way from the outside in on both holes. So I'm going to shut down for a minute. Be right back. Uh, roll this around 90. That's not going to be any fun. Let's uh, let's see what happens from the other direction. I think I'd rather start that way and see what happens. All right, we'll dope this up again, and now we're back to 2.4. And keep your fingers crossed. Made it through that. A 
I don't know about the bottom. May have to sharpen the drill again, but I'm on that uh, the uh, register groove for the R8 collet on the other coming from the other direction. We made it. We made it with the old drill bit. All right, so we should be a loose fit here. Boy, that's pretty tight still. I was looking for a little more clearance than that using the old bit. I think I may have to go to a P. That's this is a uh, uh, the shank of the bolt is a, about 310 uh, on this 5 16 fastener, and the O drill bit is 316. Uh, a P drill bit, I think, is about 323. But I'm going to have to go for that extra clearance. And this is not nearly so good a drill bit. It's just a high-speed steel and a cheap one at that. So I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Well, it didn't like it, but it went through. But that's okay. I wouldn't. I don't care if I ruin this bit. Okay, that's that's probably enough to to do the job. Well, let's come back out to six hundred thousandths and see if we can get that other hole all the way through. registered and I got a thousandth off there let's see if we can get back to 600 there we go all right dip it again in the goop and try one more time all right that passed all the way through Okay, with any luck those will be lined up with the holes in the other one. I'll shut this down, do some cleanup and deburring, and meet you back over on the roll around cart. This video was running a little bit long, so we'll break it here, uh, finish up uh, what, what we'll call part one, and <clears throat> we hope you'll come back for part two. Well, when we actually will meet at the roll around cart. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you'll subscribe. I hope you'll like. I hope you'll comment. I hope you'll come back for part two. Thanks for watching.